Hi everyone, welcome to our garden in the winter. Today is one of those days that I absolutely adore. It's snowy, it's mild and it's sunny and there are tons of birds on my bird feeders. Today, let's talk about bird feeders and house sparrows. I've never really had to deal with them. We don't have as many of them here, but over the years we have collected some tips and tricks from customers from all over United States and Canada. So I thought I would share them with you if your house sparrows are emptying your bird feeders and bullying all the other birds. So if you have a nut feeder, all you have to do is tie a bunch of zip ties around the feeding area. I think you can do the same with your suet feeder. You might have to add several layers of zip ties. And if you have seed feeders, um, apparently house sparrows don't like anything shiny. So you can deter them with a bunch of washers. All you have to do is get some fishing line and then attach those washers with a fishing line to any of the perches that you have. Jeff, who sent me this picture says that it really stopped house sparrows from visiting his feeder. You might have to play with the, the, the length of the fishing line because in different areas um, it worked differently. So all you need uh, to deter your house sparrows is a bunch of zip ties, washers and fishing line. Dale Nab in Michigan has been feeding birds for decades, but recently he's noticed that his finches prefer sunflower hearts to niger seeds, so he's wondering why. Hi Dale. Interesting observations about your backyard American goldfinch populations. But let's deal with the easy part of your query first. You're absolutely correct in your observation that American goldfinches prefer sunflower hearts over niger seed. For decades, most folks offered the niger seed to goldfinches, but in more recent years, sunflower hearts have become a more popular feeder food for not just them, but several other backyard bird species. While it's impossible for me to comment on the actual taste of the two food items, it may well be that the finches get a bigger bang for their buck nutritionally from the sunflower hearts than the tiny niger seeds. To add further support to your observation, a survey of folks feeding European goldfinches in the UK in backyards found exactly the same thing. Now onto the darker side of your query. Are American goldfinches in decline? While they are still regarded as common, their numbers have decreased by an estimated 0.6% per year between 1966 and 2019 for a cumulative decline of 27%. Recent studies have fingered climate warming as the culprit. The American goldfinch is the state bird of New Jersey and temperatures have risen there in recent decades to the point where goldfinches are going elsewhere. Can you imagine losing your state bird? Let's hope that doesn't happen. As we head into the coldest part of the winter here, a couple of tips on how to reduce your impact on the planet. First, thermostats. Please remember to turn them down in the rooms that you don't use or when you go to sleep. And if you have a ceiling fan, try running it in reverse so it sucks up warm air and then spreads it out across the room and that will also give your heaters a break. And Christmas lights. I've noticed that there are still lots of people who have them on, especially during the night. Please turn them off because they do disturb birds at night and any other wildlife in your neighborhood. And if you're in the south, some birds have already started to migrate and when do most birds migrate at night of course what would our world be like if we were to lose the ostrich the world's largest bird or the hummingbirds the world's smallest birds or perhaps even the vultures in other words the species with the most unique features both morphologically and ecologically it's not an implausible outcome according to a recently published study the world's biodiversity, including our birds, is facing a global extinction crisis. And the first species to disappear may well be those with the most extreme features, including not only referring to their physical attributes, but also to the ecological services they provide to the planet. According to the authors of the study, the process is a form of homogenization, and it means that bird species are evolving to become more and more alike and less interesting. A team of researchers analyzed a set of continuous morphological traits from 8,455 bird species found in museum collections. Next, they methodically removed species in order from most to least risk of extinction. Their analysis showed a disturbing pattern of homogenization that may well become widespread, affecting ecosystems all over the world. 
it was not just the birds with the most extreme physical features, such as size or special bill shapes, that are in critical danger of going extinct, but also those birds which perform special services to the ecosystem. A good example of the latter is the vulture family. The study found that the Himalayan uplands and lowlands contain the highest levels of homogenization, partly driven by its loss of vultures. Vultures are widely known for their important ecosystem services by removing decaying carcasses, and their extinction would likely lead to an increase in the transmission of infectious diseases, not just for birds, but for humans too. So we're not only losing bird species at an unprecedented rate, but also those with unique traits and similar life histories. With the consequences for humanity being largely unknown, are we ready for a browner or a more vanilla world with our birds? Another sparrow we're talking about on this episode is the American tree sparrow. Did you know that these poor birds were called the American tree sparrows because to all those first European settlers, they looked like the Eurasian tree sparrows. To be honest with you, I don't really see the resemblance, but I guess after a long, dangerous voyage, one tends to forget some details. In the winter, they're pretty much found everywhere in the United States and Canada. In my backyard they show up kind of sporadically. Some winters I see them all the time, other winters not so much. And because I don't see them that frequently, it took me a while to remember or like to figure out some features to distinguish them from other sparrows. But now I have two. So the first one is their beaks. They have bicolored beaks. The bottom is yellow and the top one is kind of a grayish, darkish. And the second feature, they have this beautiful brown eyeliner, eyeshadow, whatever you want to call it. Every time I look at them, I think of the 60s makeup and models like Sophia Loren and Bridget Bardot. Anyway, that's what helped me to remember them. I hope it will be helpful to you as well. Let's check them out comparing to other common sparrows. So here's an American tree sparrow and a song sparrow and an American tree sparrow and a chipping sparrow. And because American tree sparrows tend to travel really far, far north to breed, there's still tons of data that's missing about them. Uh, we know that they travel at night, they migrate at night like other songbirds. They have one brood per season. They love seeds and especially in the winter, they'll come happily to your backyards. They're ground forages, but I have seen them many times at my regular tube feeders. So if you want to see, remember, photograph uh, American tree sparrow, or the little brown things as uh, many people call them, now is the time of the year to do so. All right, everyone, time to say goodbye. My feet are completely frozen right now and I see squirrels in the back. They're making all sorts of noises and dancing or doing something. So I'm gonna go check it out. Take care, everyone. I'll catch you in two weeks.